good. No. Dr. Marie wanted to give No, he wanted to tell you something. Yes, I have to
glad and I'm joyful. I'm ecstatic to be alive and well today. Am I the only person happy to be alive this morning? I praise God for every time I open up my eyes and see a brand new day. Praise God. Why don't you stand to your feet and welcome once again this male chorus. Can you give God praise for them this morning? Praise God. Come on, bless us again. Baby.
go last night. Father God, we just want to thank you. Lord God, we just thank you for this day that you have made, Lord God. For it is a day that we've never seen before, and it's a day we'll never see again. Father God, we just thank you for who you are. Lord God, we thank you because you loved us first. We thank you, Father God, because you created the heavens and the earth and you were there too at the beginning. And Lord God, you will be there at the end. Father, we just want to thank you because you are our everything. You are our wonderful counselor. Lord God, you are our prince of peace. You are our mighty God. You are our doctor. You are our Lord in the courtroom. You are a mother and a father and a sister and a brother to us, Lord God. You are there when no one else is there for us, God. We just want to thank you. Lord God, we just want to thank you for the breath of life, Lord God. And we do not take it for granted, Lord God, that you allowed us to lay down last night. And you allowed us to sleep and slumber throughout the night. And some of us prayed throughout the night as we rolled and we moved and we had our being in the night. And then, oh God, because you loved us so much, you gave us one more opportunity and you touched your eyelids and you breathed life into us once again today, Lord God. We thank you for that, God, and we don't take it for granted, Lord God. But so many have lost loved ones, God, unexpected to us, but not unexpected to you, God, because you knew the beginning and you knew the end. Lord God, you even knew what was in between, Lord God. And so we want to thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning.
Baptist Church in Ashland, Providence Baptist Church in Ashland. That's this Thursday at 12 p.m. at the Providence Baptist Church in Ashland. But also, uh, Sister Shirley King's daughter, uh, Jackie King, Jackie A. King, will be funeralized on that same day, uh, Thursday, April 25th. Uh, at noon uh, at the Greenwood Baptist Church, at the Greenwood Baptist Church. So please be in support of that family. We know we have members that are connected to both people, so we understand members will be probably in both places. That's okay. The important thing is how to support how you can. Deaconess um, Esther Davis, we mentioned this before, probably be a, a Bible study of, um, before. Um, this is her, uh, this is her niece, excuse me, her niece Rhoda Davis um, will be funeralized, or was funeralized, excuse me, this past Friday uh, on the 19th, just past Friday. So we definitely uh, lift up the entire Davis family as well as the King family, as well as the Bryce and Alexander family. Last but not least, I want you to keep in prayer, Sister Maggie Benton and Brother Gilbert Robinson. Keep them in prayer. They just funeralized on last Monday. Did I say that right? Monday. 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 Last Monday, right? Last Monday was uh, last Monday, Brother Michael Cousins. Am I saying that right? Brother Michael Cousins. So I want to make sure uh, you keep them in prayer as well. Again, lots going on in the life of our church. Um, so please lift them all up in prayer. Um, I believe, I hope I haven't missed out on any family at all. If I have, please pull me to the side and make sure we announce it, get it out there so people can understand what's going on in the life of our church. Um, I want to share with you also briefly uh, this morning my special uh, thanks on behalf of uh, my wife uh, and I for a wonderful pastoral celebration. I want to give God praise to all of you. Can we give God praise for that? I want to. I want to thank. I want to thank um, definitely the pastors, aid, ministry, and leadership of Sister Ruby Anderson. Um, uh, you know for uh, coordinating all of it and making sure the ministry can participate and those who joined her. I want to thank. Um, you know, the youth ministry for, on that Friday, we had movie night, it was a blessed time. We even had youth uh, to participate uh, in serving. If you were here, you saw them serving. So it was a, really a blessed time in the Lord. Media ministry, making sure everybody could enjoy uh, watching the movie Journey to Bethlehem. Uh, that Saturday, you missed a treat. We were there uh, at Drive Shack, and it was a blessed time. Uh, my brother was trying to get his golf game on. Amen. I had multiple teachers. Amen. <laughs> I really did. You know, trying to get my swing right. Amen. So I, I'm learning. I, I'm definitely going to go back for sure uh, to practice my swing. I'm going to get it right, Brother Anderson. I'm going to get it right. I promise you. Amen. We can have a little golf. <laughs> Can I am with you, amen. But I'm gonna need to lift up an offering on the purchase of our golf clubs. Y'all laughing, amen. I already told the ushers you better lift up an offering. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. And finally on the Sunday, we were blessed with the word of God uh, from Reverend Lance Watson Jr. Um, preached a powerful word. But wait, there's more. Amen. It's a blessed blessing to receive that word and definitely hospitality ministry. Praise God who served all of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. It was a, a delicious meal, a blessed time. If I miss out on anybody, thank you to anybody. I say thank you to everybody. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> miss anyone at all. It was a blessed time. I'm privileged and honored to serve as your pastor, you know, here for 22 years. And if God see fit, amen, and give me health and strength, I will continue as long as he will have me to continue. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I ain't going on there. Amen. I'm here. <laughs> I hope you know that by now. Amen. I am here. So, glory to God for all of you. I serve a very special group of people here called Abner Baptist Church, and I'm privileged to serve as your pastor. Amen? I mean that from the bottom of my heart. 
Um, please join us, amen. I'm, I'm done, but please join us for our weekly Bible study experience if you have the opportunity to do that. Make time for studying God's Word. Truly make time for that. Uh, every Wednesday via Zoom uh, at 7 p.m. Join us on a Zoom call, amen, for us to get right into God's Word in our morning, Sunday morning experience at 8.30 for uh, Sunday school. So please make sure you're able to tune in, get connected to the Word of God. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. How many know the Lord's been mighty good to you? Yeah. You can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. Amen. We'll have Deacon Winston to help us to lift up our tithes and our offering, our gifts of love at this time. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a blessed day. Not as good as it was yesterday, but we still here. Amen. Amen. Ushers, Davis, please come forward.
same day and day. Same day and day.
praise the Lord. Come on, give God a hand. Sing it to day, the same day. Come on, give God praise for all of our men. Don't they look marvelous this morning? Amen. I praise for them. Amen. Y'all still ain't give me that time yet. So I'm not going to hold it against you, though. Know? I love every last one of you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got your word, your Bible with you today. Turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. If you don't mind rising to your feet in reverence to God's word today, I greatly appreciate it. If you're not able to stand, just make sure you have your Bible in your hand so we can all follow along together. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to really look at just really one verse of scripture today. In fact, what I'm going to do is read a little bit, give a little more context. Um, start with me um, at verse 20. We will take it to 25. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. Once you found it, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Help say hold on. Amen. Help your neighbor out. Make sure everybody is there. Amen. Put in the Google machine if you have to. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. God's word we started in verse 1. He said, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 25 is our focus. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. Amen. Let's sure say amen. You may be seated. I want to preach today from a simple subject entitled Beyond the Surface, Deep Cleaning for the Soul. Beyond the Surface, Deep Cleaning for the Soul. Pray your heads with me for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of waking up this morning. Thank you for the honor, of Lord, of being able to step out of the bed, O oh Lord, and be able to stand on my own, stand on our own. We thank you for that health and that strength that you grant to each and every one of us as your beloved children. We thank you, Lord, for all the ability and functionalities that we currently have. Lord, help us right now, God, to focus our attention not on yesterday, not on the past, not on problems, not on troubles. But, Lord, focus it right on your word right now. Have thine away with us, O Lord. Let your Holy Spirit touch our hearts and our minds, empowering us, Lord, to be more like you. We thank you for what we're about to receive right now, that people see all of you and none of me, hear all of me, and absolutely none of me. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Let those who agree say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Amen. Beyond the service, deep cleaning for the soul. See, it is that time of the year. Many of us engage in spring cleaning. Say amen, somebody. See, spring cleaning is different, beloved, from all other types of cleaning because it involves more than the usual dusting, the vacuuming, and generic cleaning of bathrooms. You don't wait to get to spring clean to start cleaning your bathroom. Say amen, somebody. So, uh, see, it's that time of the year to focus, beloved, on cleaning areas of our homes, our houses, apartments, or however we live, both inside and outside, that have been neglected throughout the year. 
Amen. For instance, some people claim they are blind. Some people claim the inside and outside of their windows. You may have power washed the exterior of your house, including your debt. You may shampoo your carpet and even rearrange furniture for a whole new look and or to clean forgotten areas. See, while going uh, through such arduous cleaning, it is here you discover how dirty, truly dirty, your house is. Say amen. You don't know how dirty it is until you really start cleaning. You arrive at the personal confession that you overlook some stuff. See, for some strange reason, you miss the chicken bones underneath the couch pillow. You miss the dust caked on your baseboards, and you miss the cup of dried up orange juice underneath your bed. Somebody look at your baby and say, that's just nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, beloved, it is then. Oh, I got more. Amen. It is then we come to the startling conclusion that we should clean our houses more often. Not only more often, but the right way. See, some people pretend to clean. Amen. If you just dusting, you're not cleaning. That's why it's called dusting. Amen. See, if that is the true uh, for the place we lay our heads, beloved, then it has to be true for the spiritual house in which we worship both corporately and individually. See, it's not just the outside that needs domestic cleaning, but, beloved, the inside of people's hearts. Feel, beloved, with falsehood, feel with all kinds of deception, clutter, with contempt and concealment, loaded with lies and saturated with secrets that need spiritual cleaning. See, on the outside, people, beloved, are like pretty lawns with manicured manners, faces bright like flowers, and they are tired like trim hedges. See, they appear to be what we call a well-to-do family. When people look at them, they see a picture of happiness and a frame of success. See, on the outside, they are devoted churchgoers and generous givers. On the outside, they look like where I grew up, like the Jeffersons, where they finally found their piece of the pie. But on the inside, they're the real house of pain which stems from telling lies. Say amen. See, if there's anything that can tear a family apart, beloved, from the inside out, it would have to be lies. Look at your neighbor and say, don't go to sleep right now. Amen. You need to listen. See, the apostle Paul, as the author of our text today, was instructing the Christians at Ephesus to put off falsehood or the King James Version lying because he was trying to keep the church, beloved, from being torn down or apart. Paul spent a lot of part of chapter 1 and all of chapter 4, if you read this, of this particular book, talking about unity, where at one point he equated unity and with speaking the truth. See, in chapter 4, verse 15, Paul said, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will all, we in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ. Flip the script where the truth builds us up. How many y'all know lies being the opposite of the truth must tear us down? See, therefore, if lies can tear down, tear us down in the church, it can definitely tear down our family. Say amen. Yes, it will. See, that's why I firmly believe that if you want your family to be built up and not torn down or destroyed by the father of all lies, the devil, then it's time, beloved, to do a deep cleaning in your own house from the inside out. 
Yes, it is. See, I'm sorry. I know I must be preaching, but I've been to the wrong crowd this morning. I, I feel you. I understand. I'm just talking to the folk online because some of you, I see it already looking at me as if, beloved, your house has never been infected with lies. See, everybody tells the truth in your house all the time. Y'all ain't talking to me. Your children are pristine, perfect. You, as a parent, a grandparent, have never neglected the truth. Uh, your spouse has always been straight with you. Trust me, this message is not for you this morning. No, this message is for people that have no shortage of pretenders and Christian chameleons. You don't know who you are dealing with from day to day because you cannot believe anything they say. Say amen. See children pretending to be model citizens in school and you find out that they are the biggest clowns in the room. See, as a parent, you have to act like a police detective where you have to talk to the teacher, talk to the principal and your child to see whose story does not add up. Amen. Where are my parents at this morning? See, see, it's time to spiritually do a deep cleaning in our homes for when we have teenagers lying about who they have been talking to online, on the phone, texting, teen lying, beloved, about who they have been chatting with, what they have been saying about themselves, pretending to be people they know they are not. Children telling their parents that they are going over a girlfriend's house or beloved uh, to meet up at the mall, meet up at the movie theater, when in reality they are going to see their secret boyfriend. Girl, okay, that's not y'all. Amen. I preach to somebody out there. If I'm preaching to you, then it's time to do a deep clean. Yes, it is. Proverbs 12, verse 22 tells us, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. See, believe it or not, beloved, lying does at least three things. First, it misrepresents the truth, but the person who lied to you does not know the truth. Therefore, he or she has to act or live upon a lie. Second, it deceives a person, much like what Delilah did to Samson. She seduced him into thinking that she loved him and only wanted to know the secret of his strength as a means to get close to him. Of course she lied. How many know she lied? Now, she lied because she was truly a prostitute looking uh, beloved for the Philistines just to pay her. Third, let me help you. Lying builds a wrong relationship that will not last. How many of y'all know that to be the truth? Yes, it is. See, you cannot possibly live together as a family if it is based upon a lie. I can't have a relationship with people if it's based upon a lie. If I say I love you, I mean I love you. And I'm going to tell you the truth, so help me God. I wish I had witnesses there. Because I have to do it if I love you. The essence of loving somebody is to be good to them, to, to be kind to them, to have mercy on them, and to what? Tell them the truth. See, I'm going to help you. And sometimes when I'm able to counsel couples, beloved, I, I tell couples that you have to be transparent with each other. You have to let the other person know exactly what's going on. It always starts with the truth. I'm going to help you here today because that's most of the time is what's the problem. You're communicating in a way but if our families are going to walk together, live together, grow together, pray together, stay together, we must do a deep cleaning of our houses together as well. I'm going to help you. If you're serious about it this season, beloved, in your life and clean up a falsehood you may find in your own home, then look at somebody and say, do your own laundry. 
okay, God, y'all look at me crazy. Okay, I'm going to help you. See, Paul said, put off falsehood. He was referring to one's old sinful life um, before salvation through Jesus Christ. Falsehood, deception, and misrepresentation were characteristics of who you used to be, but not any longer. In verse 22, he said, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Essentially, Paul said the same thing in Colossians 3, verse 9. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with his practices, Paul is saying, hear me good, that telling lies is like wearing the same old, nasty, dirty, come on somebody, funky clothes that you wore the day before. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Trust me, I'm growing up, amen, raising boys, amen. They go off for five minutes and come back in, Lord, help them, amen. That's all I want to say. Amen. Lord, I, and then I have to think back to the fact that my mama experienced the same thing with me. And I say, Lord, thank you. <laughs> See, now imagine, though, for a moment, though, arriving to work tomorrow and for the rest of the week with the same, get this dirty clothes you had on today. Mm. After working really hard in praise and worship, y'all not going to run around hard, y'all. Working hard all day, amen, praise and worship. Brothers, you wear the same ring around the collar shirt. And sisters, you wear the same dress, same pantyhose and undergarments. Lord Jesus, now Wednesday, you would have been sent home for violating the company's dress policy. Failure to come to work with clean clothes. See, see, my mama told me this way, son, and even if you have to wear the same clothes, that's all right every day. Please. Make sure they are clean and neat. No holes. Amen. Amen. And God ain't raised that way, were you? Uh, amen. God bless you for the free lesson this morning. See, but no one wants to be around anybody that continuously wears dirty clothes. Say amen. See, just as you don't wear dirty clothes to work because people wouldn't want to be around you, then don't wear a lie because people in your family would not want to hang around you either. See, the only solution for you and members of your family is to do your own laundry. Go help you. See, I know, I know, love, you have mama in them. I know you got people. Amen. You got it like that. Say amen. To pay somebody. Amen. To do your laundry. Amen. Sack them up nice and neat. You work all day. Come home. Clean house. You got it like that. You can go to sleep on me right now. This point is not for you, but the vast majority of us. Amen. At some point, you got to clean up your own house. You got to do your own laundry. Amen. Yes, you do. See, see whether you have a top or a front load high efficiency machine, color guard cheer cannot get this guard your character. Tide beloved cannot remove the stain of pain. Please cannot brighten the betrayal. Pain can give people confidence that what you are saying is the truth. And even fabric softener, beloved, can never soften the heart, call for hurt, beloved, that's been caused by fabrication. The only thing I know that has enough power to place lies, beloved, and any deception, manipulation, and any sin, the only thing under heaven that has enough cleansing power when you can lose all of your guilty sin. Let me help you. It's drawn from Emmanuel's van. The only thing I know is the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to help you. I see I got to go back and hesitate. Amen. See, in the Old Testament, it was the blood of bulls and goats that cleansed the sins of the anointed priests and the Israelite people. But that blood didn't have enough power to break the power of sin over their lives once and for all. I wish I had Bible people now. But the blood of Jesus, how many of y'all know it got power? But the blood of Jesus has so much power in it that it not only breaks the power of sin 
over your life, but the power of sin over any person that believes in Jesus Christ. That's why that hymnist had already told us what can wash away my sins, what can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I help you? For it reaches the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. I wish I had somebody that know that the blood will never lose its power. I, I'm not the same I was before I got saved. I'm a new creature in him because his blood saved my soul and cleaned me up. Is there anybody here this morning that don't mind testifying that it was the blood that made me home? It was the blood that forgave my sin. It was the blood that gave me power. It was the blood that allowed me to praise and worship him because of power that is found in the blood. I got to move on. Look at somebody say, do your own laundry. Yeah, you have to do it. Amen. Amen. And then as you do your own laundry, then the Lord will help you, beloved, to clean it up. Let me have case it on. I'm a second today, beloved. Look at somebody say, now clean out your cloth. Okay. Y'all got real quiet right there. It was like a pin drop. For a second there. And I don't see oftentimes when we clean our rooms, we neglect cleaning our closets because hardly anyone looks inside of them. Uh oh, hey, hey, I only got one in there. Somebody say, Amen. See, for many of us, our closets are not for public viewing because they are filled with clothes and shoes we don't wear anymore. Come on, somebody. Got children, got board games we don't play anymore, books we read years ago, and junk piles of all kinds of stuff. Now, if you ever clean out your closet, you start, as you keep going through, you're like, when am I going to get to the bottom? There's <laughs> just so much in there. Now, some of y'all keep the door, amen. Got to put your weight on it just to keep the door closed and not open up on anybody. People come to visit your house and say, oh, no, don't touch that door. As you know, so some won't come out that closet. Say it ain't so. See, nevertheless, they are all hidden, tucked, and buried away in a barrage of boxes and bags for years. The rest of the house looks fine, but the closets look hideous because for years, the stuff you didn't want anybody to see after you cleaned the other part of the house, you threw it into the closet. Yes, you did. Until one day, when you needed something that was at the bottom of the closet, you knew you had to clean everything out before you retrieved what you needed. Amen. And so it is, though, beloved, with our family relationships for years in the closets of our consciousness. We are hidden, tucked, and buried away. Too many boxes and bags of secret lies. We have even fooled ourselves into believing what they don't know won't hurt them. See, but the truth is, what they don't know could kill them. Y'all not helping me. Listen, beloved, I love you in the Lord. And I'm telling you that you can no longer ignore and walk, beloved, by the painful closets in your life. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will start cleaning out your closets today by confessing to family members all the lies you told them, beloved, or the truth you kept from them. You, in order to get some right with folks, sometimes you just got to come clean. That's what they do when folks, have you ever, ever watched, you ever watched any of these shows, beloved, 48 hours, you name whatever detective story you want to watch, they get them in the uh, investigative room, they start questioning them, interrogating them. Their whole goal is to get a confession. 
Yes, it is. And some detectives are very sophisticated enough to get that, that confession out of them. But once the person confesses, the detectives say, don't you feel better now? Don't you feel like the weight's been lifted off of you? Hear me good today, beloved. If confession works for folk who do wrong and commit crimes, yes, confession works for a child of God to have a whole lot of secrets against family members for years on end. In fact, it got even greater power because now you can restore relationship. Now you can wipe the slate clean. Now you can move forward. You got to tell some people, I just want to start over with you. But it begins with a confession. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry how I talked about you. You got to confess that you lied on the job application so that you could get it. Husband, confess that you have other children. Come on, somebody. And kept up on the years you lost with them. Wives, confess to your husband that you haven't always been faithful. Uh-oh. Mothers, confess to your children who the real baby daddy is. Confess exactly what's been in the closet for a long time and watch what happens when you can clean. I wish I had witnesses here that know what I'm talking about because the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your family may not ever forgive you. I'm going to say it again. Your family may will forgive you, but God will forgive you. He will wipe the slate clean, so please do a deep cleaning and move forward with your life. Yeah. Got to do it, beloved. But I have to say, I'll leave you today. Beloved, you will not only do your own laundry and clean out your closet, you got to sanitize the air. Mm. The remaining section of verse 25 says, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. I'm going to say it again. Speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Paul didn't just tell the Ephesians to stop lying or put on falsehood. No, Paul believed that the way you combat or eradicate falsehood in our homes or on our jobs is not with more falsehood or lies but with the truth. Beloved, the truth is more powerful than a lie. It's more powerful. Now I know in the political realm, you, you, you hear about a whole lot of lies. That he, and you, this whole, this whole look, you're being socialized through the political uh, atmosphere to think that if you keep telling the same lie, <laughs> that somehow, magically, your lucky charms will come through and it will turn into what? The truth. How many of you know that you a lie? A lie told a thousand times, two thousand times, five thousand times is still a lie. I don't care how you flip it, I don't care how you turn it. I don't care what you pick a different day to say it. I don't care if you wait two, three years, five years to say the same line. It is still the same line. You can tell me, walk me outside and say, hey, you know, Jamal, the, the really, really, the sky is purple. It is purple. And you can kind of convince me as much as you want and tell me 10 years from now, say, the sky is purple. And I'll say, no, no, that's not the truth. The sky is still blue. No matter what you say, it's still blue. The truth about it is more powerful than a lie. Proverbs 12, 19 says, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Mm. See, while the devil is the father of all lies, Jesus is the truth personified. For Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way. The what? Truth and the life. See, since death and life are within the power of your tongue, you have a choice, beloved, as to whether you will speak life, which is the truth, or death, which is a lie. Until you get tired of all the deception, manipulation, and lying games, you will continue to tolerate it. 
Let me help you this way. No, no. In many of our homes, I love this analogy, this illustration. Somebody has been, uh, y'all do it up right now. Y'all fry fish. Yeah, you do. You, you, you burn up sometimes some chicken uh, for a period of time. And somebody, somebody, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, has let out a certain gas. Y'all act like y'all living like a crazy. <laughs> Don't let me go down and break it down to you. Somebody has done something, their breath, come on somebody, is a gas that's in the room, and, and sometimes you're wondering, how am I going to escape this room? <laughs> you, you come out, or you go into some people's houses, and you walk in, you feel like you're about to get knocked up on the floor because of the smell that is in that house. Y'all ain't never visited anybody. Y'all quiet. How, how, what am I going to do? You, you, you try to, you, you ever go to visit somebody and they, 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 knock, they knock you so much that you gotta, you, you start, you start talking slow because you're trying to catch a breath and hold on. Y'all, y'all ain't never been there. And you just wondered in your own house, you just wanted to look. When, when there's an odor in the atmosphere, what, what do you grab? You grab some of the breeze, come on somebody. <laughs> or you grab a can of Lysol. Come on, some of y'all got it right on hand, amen. Even after you have taken the trash out of the house or put smelly clothes into the washing machine, you still have to spray something that will sanitize or kill the odor causing bacteria polluting the air because it's everywhere and it affects everybody. So have you ever read the directions for not on the back of a Lysol can for sanitizing the air? I'm, I'm going to help you here for a moment. It says, shake well before each use. To temporarily reduce airborne odor causing bacteria and eliminate odors, close all the doors the windows and air vents, hold the can upright. Press the button and spray towards the center of an average size room for 10 seconds. I thought about that thing. The Lord helped me to see this in a different kind of way. He said, lies are like bad odor in the air. It's like speaking the father of lies, the devil, into the atmosphere of your house. See, beloved, if you want to sanitize the air with the truth of God's order eliminating word, then you have to shake up the truth that is in you first. Say with me, make sure, beloved, the word of truth that is the Bible, the Word of God is in you first before you start speaking it into the air. For you can't speak what you don't know and you can't give what you don't have. So if you don't speak the Word because the air with the viruses that are lurking around of demonic influences of all kinds of, of manipulation, all kinds of things that have profanity that's been sleeped out into the air. If you don't deal with the things that are in the atmosphere of your own home, you won't speak that kind of word where you are the button to the word of God. The word of God cannot be released, much like the uh, Lysol can't come out the can unless you press the button. And the button, beloved, to the word of God is your mouth. It does not have any power. It can't do anything unless you speak the word. When the word goes out, beloved, make sure it is firmly in your heart in you because it doesn't have power if it ain't in you first. Otherwise, you're just speaking words on the pages of a book, but when you got the word in your heart and you speak it in the atmosphere, it will have the power that it's supposed to have. 
See, but once you got the truth of his word in you, I bet you'll go to every room, close the doors, close every window, remove every distraction, turn the cell phone off, move into the center of every room, and for at least 10 seconds, start speaking the word of God. And watch what happens, because every time you speak the word, you are spiritually sanitizing the air in your house. If you want the devil out of your house, then open up your mouth and start speaking the word of God. Start speaking as for me in my house. We will serve the Lord. Speak, we are the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Speak, we are blessed. Broke. You got to say we are blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in the field, blessed in my coming, blessed in my going. Speak the word. If you feel like you're about to die, speak the word. Live long life. He will satisfy me. If you're grieving, speak the word. God is a God of all comfort. Speak the word that we can endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Speak the word.
right where you are. Take a moment by your hands with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt on today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for reminding us to put off that falsehood. Lord, to always engage in enjoying the truth. Lord, that's our old self of falsehood. It would help us to continue to embrace our new self of telling the truth. No, we don't recognize, oh Lord, that in society, telling the truth is becoming unpopular. But Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you will help us to do a deep cleaning of our souls. So that, Lord, Lord, we will continue, oh Lord, to speak the truth. Speak your word no matter what. We bless you for that right now, God. Lord, forgive us, oh Lord, of our many, many sins. Continue, Lord, to help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Continue, Lord, to empower us to be more like you every single day of our lives. To this, we give you praise and we give you the glory and the honor. For it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Those who agree with that say hallelujah. And on the back of hands, we give God praise. Amen. Let's just say amen. amen. All right. Let's look to be dismissed. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Go in peace.